Um, my name's Tim. I own a company called Yummy Pub Company, but more recently, I own a company called Letterbox Cocktails uh, with the gorgeous Seb, who is going to come on after me, looking far more dapper and, and much more interesting. Um, so, where do, where do we start? So, my business is a pub company, I own four sites, turn over about six million quid. Then in March last year, government said, shut your pubs, mate, you can't do anything. Uh, so we did stuff for, uh, we fed the homeless, we did homeless meals, and we did isolated meals out of one of our sites on a shop. We were really busy. Uh, we needed to protect six of our team from furlough that weren't eligible for furlough. So everything we did was to raise money to be able to pay their wages, uh, and that took up all of our time. We took all of the stock from all of our pubs, 160 grand's worth, to one pub, which is in Surrey, uh, and flogged it all uh, at a shop, but we were struggling to sell the spirits. Nobody really wanted to pay the price of spirits versus supermarkets. So we started mucking around with milk bottles, uh, decanting cocktails, giving them away, just having a bit of fun. Didn't really go anywhere. Uh, reopened the pubs, carried on trading through the delight that is the pandemic and uh, attempting to trade through from closing the sites down. And then when we closed in December, just gone, uh, we decided to really push ahead with this. So uh, this is an intro. Mine, you don't get to drink yet, but you can take home. So come and grab a box. I think I've got enough for everybody. Just about made fresh this morning. Uh, basically, they are a range of fresh made cocktails that we send out in the post. Um, and they're all made freshly in my pub in Surrey. We've built a new bar. Uh, they come in a box like so, fully gift wrapped. So they're gift wrapped inside and then come in a pouch. And this is a lemon meringue pie. So we send out um, all the fresh ingredients, you shake it up, chuck it in the fridge, put it in a glass, away you go. Uh, and we do a whole range. So we do everything from Mai Tais through to uh, Drunken Leprechauns, which is Guinness uh, boiled down to near nothing into a syrup. And then we created a cocktail from it. So we've done seasonal cocktails uh, and we send uh, Negronis, etc. We stumbled on a massive part of our trade, which was corporate gifting. So um, we created a lot of noise, made, made loads of noise out there and people started to come to us. So we've created bespoke blend, uh, br blends that match to branding. So we color code the branding to the, or the cocktail to a brand. Uh, this is one that we sent out for Fleet Street uh, to all of their team just after Christmas. Uh, dehydrated rhubarb on top and then a fresh sprig of rosemary, um, all gift wrapped through the post. We've also teamed up with uh, different confectionery brands, so you can put an add into your box, so you can add in the popcorn, uh, chocolate bars, so basically trying to take on the flowers through the post delivery um, scheme, an idea. Um, we do things and just muck around. This one's a, a candy floss, so you get a lemon sour, and then the candy floss is separate in the pouch. It dissolves into the cocktail and creates a bit of magic and whirls around, so we've been doing loads of that. We just did a big send for PlayStation, uh, two and a half thousand cocktails to all of their UK team of developers about two weeks ago. Um, and then Joe jumps in directly from the pub uh, and does master classes of cocktails with people on Zoom. So everybody's embraced the delight that is Zoom and not been able to see people face to face. Uh, and Joe will jump on, go through a whole session with somebody, showing them how we make the cocktail from the very beginning. Uh, and they're sent out in the post. We're doing about four or five of these a week at the minute. Uh, for different sends, for birthday parties, um, Hindus. There are still a, a hell of a lot of people that aren't coming out uh, into the trade, so we're using the market to capitalize on that. Uh, and we're also doing it for different awards nights and that kind of stuff uh, through. Uh, and that's ultimately what we're, what we're doing, how it was born out of the pandemic. So we took down a couple of Royal Mail sorting offices at the very beginning uh, with burst bags um, and people's posts. Without a doubt, we were blacklisted by Royal Mail and the posties weren't very happy with us. I uh, went through a whole process of learning how to seal the bags, what spirits we could put in it, um, certain spirits, uh, Prosecco, we can decamp Prosecco in, but we now t uh, need to allow it a bit of time to just settle. Uh, we were sealing the bag really quickly, so it was expanding in the post and then exploding everywhere. Uh, everything's recycled, fully recycled. The, the plastic is fully recycled. The box, the flyers, everything. Um, sustainability was a massive, massive part and is a massive part of our existing business. So we wanted to develop it into this one. Uh, and we send these out every day of the week. Uh, we are sending out uh, to birthday parties or to uh, anniversaries or somebody to just say, hey, how are you? Missing you or haven't seen you for a bit. 
Uh, everybody told me that this would stop the minute the pubs were able to open and nobody would possibly want to buy cocktails through the post and I was absolutely mad. Uh, we're sending anything between three to four hundred a week right up to three or four thousand depending on what we're doing and who we're doing it for. So uh, we're expecting Christmas to be a great boom for us. So we've currently shot all of our Christmas collection uh, mucking around with you know, classics like Terry's Chocolate Orange and we sent out an espresso martini with a Cadbury's cream egg for Easter uh, about five and a half thousand units uh, we shifted through with people slicing the Cadbury's cream egg to try and keep it on top of the foam and see how good they were sending out the foam uh, a bit of a challenge so that's us uh, what we did so I shall pass over to Mr Gorgeous before we go to Q&A's if there are any and Thank you. uh, all yours Hi guys, I'm Sebastian. I'm uh, the founder of a company called Lollipop. Um, we are traditionally in, operate in the immersive hospitality space where we combine experiences with immersion and a traditional food and beverage environment to create spaces which are quite unique as compared to your old bars and restaurants. Um, Lollipop is now split into two main categories. We've got immersive fun houses, Two of them are in London, uh, one smaller one is in Southwark, the larger ones are in Chelsea and Hackney, and we're about to open a smaller operation in Newcastle. And then, of course, since last year, we actually branched out into uh, ready-to-drink bottle cocktails, which I'll talk a lot more about um, in, in this presentation. So, what is Hackney Funhouse? Hackney Funhouse is split into three different sections, ABQ London, it's one of our oldest bars inspired by a very famous TV series called Breaking Bad. Then we've got a pizza place in there and we've got an espresso martini bar. So the idea is that you come to experience one section of the fun house and you end up staying for other things which are happening in the fun house. Similarly, Chelsea Fun House, we've got a French restaurant called Jolie. The Bletchley is probably our most famous bar. It's a bar inspired by World War II doesn't have a menu, you come in, we give you a game to play, a mission to solve, and based on that, we design a bespoke cocktail for you. Two hour experiences, you get three cocktails, uh, and a lot of fun. And then we've got another espresso martini bar upstairs. So it's a multi-story, these are multi-story houses where a lot happens. The grid, um, it's an escape room in, infused with cocktails, that's probably the only escape room we get you drunk, so you can't leave the, the, the maze, but it's quite fun. Um, so the, the alcohol is kind of, what we call immersion is alcohol and drinking, and, and it's part of the experience. It's not separate to the operations of the experience. Um, 2020, we got shut down, um, and we decided to start bottling our cocktails, some of our house classics, some of the cocktails which people like, and start shipping them out. Um, so now we look at this market in a very different way. Uh, we look at it from a very holistic way of solving a problem which has faced us as operators and the other industry, um, fellow industry members. So what is the problem? For a consumer, we all try to make cocktails at home, but we always fail. Um, in the end, we just want to have a good drink. So I think the first, second drink, you know, when we have a party, we get involved, we try to make them, but in the end, all we need is good cocktails, consistent, and, you know, which tastes the same throughout the night. Uh, during the pandemic, we saw that a lot of people moved away from wine, um, which was quite a substantial cultural shift. So, um, you know, you'll sit at home, you'll open a bottle of wine, and you'll watch Netflix or whatever, but a lot of people got bored of that. So novelty started kicking in, and that's where cocktails became quite interesting for at-home entertainment. That's the major thing for the consumer. So we um, predominantly last, for the last one year, have served consumers because, you know, it's single serve, comes in a bottle, comes with a garnish, all you have to do is pour over ice, put the garnish, and you enjoy the cocktail. Now, you can shake them for the theatre, but we see a lot of people just want to get on and drink those cocktails. When we look at uh, the trade side of things, which is quite fascinating, being on the operation side of the business, we realise that when it comes to speed, when it comes to consistency, when it comes to wastage, and when it comes to just making sure that the drinks are getting out how they should, if you're not a boutique cocktail bar where the craft is very important, 
if you're just a bar, a theater, a cinema, then we have opened up to a new market where we give you these cocktails and you don't have to worry about the bar bark, you don't have to worry about hiring qualified bartenders, you don't have to worry about speed and consistency, you don't have to worry about stock management, you don't have to worry about wastage. So there's a lot of benefits to having these cocktails in your premises. Now, if you look at outside London, these or outside metropolis areas, these problems become even bigger. I, I'm sure all of us, we've been to a restaurant in some small village or small town, and they've got a cocktail list this big. And as soon as you ask a waiter, can I have that cocktail, the face just drops because they don't know how to make those drinks. And making a cocktail most of the time actually is harder to make um, than a dish of pasta, for example. So for restaurants where, or for premises where cocktails are not predominantly their trade, this product or just generally are ready to drink cocktails make a great, um, you know, make a great product to be served there. Um, so our solution was this. Our solution was bar grade bottle cocktails, as you can see, um, single serve, which was very important for us. Uh, because now we are going after the trade market, bartenders just want something they pour out from, and that's it. Instead of measuring it, and instead of using the kegs, we have seen most of the people, most of the people we talk to, really like the idea of a 200 ml bottle, single serve, no wastage, 100% recyclable, and thank you very much. Um, recyclable bottles, we also give you dehydrated garnishes. I'm sure all of you have seen the garnishes. They add to the cocktail, of course, a cocktail is nothing, um, it's not a cocktail without a garnish. I think we can agree to that. Um, they're all vegan friendly and they're actually, the recipes were initially or are developed by real bartenders who worked with us. Um, so just talking about the market globally, um, we all know the market is on fire. Um, you can see around here, uh, this is very heavily spirits led exhibition, but there are a few ready to drink cocktail operators, but the, 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 the space is open. There is no market leader right now. There's no go-to uh, company if you think of ready to drink at home or on premises. Um, but the market is growing. It's, it's expected to grow up to 1.7 billion globally in the, last, in the next three to four years. That is a 12.5% year to year growth. And interesting enough, it didn't really shoot up during the pandemic. This just has been a steady growth. I think the perception of drinking cocktails out of a bottle has changed and that leads to a lot more innovation, that leads to a lot more you know, demand pull from people so we can innovate and we can actually give you cocktails which taste like real cocktails out of a bottle. Um, we look at the market um, a, little bit, a little bit differently. We think the market, the ready to drink market is segmented in, in four major categories. You've got the hard seltzers. Uh, these are predominantly, as you all know, probably low alcohol, um, targeted at more events, more festivals, drink out of the can, um, they're chilled. So these guys are going after the old school wickeds and you know, the Smirnoffs. Um, quite a mature market, especially in America. It's picking up here, especially in the event space. Then we look at the small format and caned and uh, pouches, which are predominantly consumer based and um, used for gifting. Uh, you wouldn't see necessarily these cocktails um, in a trade premises because they're just not, you know, it's, it's more targeted to consumers. Then we have our space where it's single serve bottle cocktails. We kind of overlap with this space and this space um, where the product is, um, could be a consumer product, but it's also, uh, appealing to events, weddings, other venues, as I said, cinemas, theaters. We are signed up to a few cinemas, we are signed up to a few theaters, we are signed up to a few golf places, mini golf places. Wherever you need speed, but you don't potentially need um, a bartender to make those cocktails, uh, the product really works there. And the last bit is um, the cocktail kegs and larger formats. Um, so one liter cocktail bottle um, or keg. So they are almost exclusively trade-based. So we kind of sit in the middle of gifting and consumer and trade. Um, and we like the format uh, which we have. Um, this is quite interesting, the distribution of ready-to-drink cocktail market. Um, 
is predominantly through hyper and supermarkets. Now, in the UK or in Europe, actually, that is not even, we haven't even scratched the surface. You are not in, um, in any supermarket. We're not in any supermarket. But in the US, you can see it's clearly supermarket-led. So it's a big potential for uh, consumers or suppliers in, the, in, in, in Europe. Online and liquor stores, of course. But we don't see any on-trade sales here. Um, I guess it's a very new domain um, where you know, these cocktails start being sold to other venues and other bars and other restaurants. So we expect the trade on sales um, of vegetarian cocktails to grow substantially in the next few years, especially larger venues, especially where you, know, you potentially can't or don't hire, don't need to hire uh, experienced bartenders. These could be theaters, cinemas, hotels, airlines, you just name it, weddings, uh, pop-ups, um, anywhere where you need a cocktail, but not a bartender. So, a day in a bartender's life. Now, again, this is certainly not for cocktail bars where the craft of the cocktail is very important. These are for bars where volume and speed is very important. Um, an eight-hour shift, um, if a bartender is making fresh cocktails, it takes two and a half minutes minimum for a cocktail to be made. That would lead to a revenue of 2,000 pounds. Our cocktails can be made and served in 30 seconds. That can potentially lead to a revenue of 10,000 pounds. When we looked at these um, statistics, in one of our venues in Hackney, where the, the delivery of cocktails need to be consistent and fast, we actually started serving our own cocktails. And one of our staff members, I've seen her pouring a cocktail, being on the phone and slicing a pizza at the same time. And that was magic. And that's in, in, in a time when you know, staff is quite problematic, we've got a problem in our industry, um, that really helps where you don't have to come in and batch these cocktails, you don't have to worry about wastage, you don't have to worry about stock management, you don't have to worry about so many things which come with running a cocktail bar, but you're still serving great cocktails. Um, our journey, um, lockdown 1.0, um, happened at, on the 20th of March when we were told to shut down um, 2020, and we shipped our first box on the 26th of March. So in six days, we launched a whole new business with an e-commerce presence, and since then, we've sold over 100,000 bottles, um, we've had a batch production in a bottling unit, and now we are setting up our own bottling unit, which will open in October 2021, which is next month. Um, and the idea is that we are actually going into the domain of, as I said, on-premise sales, trade sales, working with operators to help them cut wastage, increase speed, increase consistency, and also cut staff costs, which is quite important. Um, some of the reviews, um, again, we were quite ahead in the game to go to the market and start selling the product. So we got picked up by some you know, great publications, which helped a lot initially to kind of get the word out there. Um, I don't know if we can play this. Can we play this, guys? Um, we've got a little video. Can we play a video? If you just click on it. It doesn't have sound? It does. It doesn't matter. And you can play the sound, that'd be great. Yeah. Hello. Uh, you, the internet is not working. All right, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Um, anyway, so uh, the idea of this range, it's very colorful, it's very fun. Uh, you're having the Aperol spritz. How was it? Good, yeah? So the idea is that, you know, we give you quality cocktails. They're, they're cocktails which everyone knows. We've got a punch, we've got an Aperol spritz. We've got Tom Collins variation, we've got the Paloma, we have an espresso martini, we have a hibiscus cooler. So these are cocktails drunk by everyone and anyone all over the world. So we didn't want to go you know, more funky, we just wanted to be cocktails which are scalable, basically. So that's about it from me. And I think, thank you very much, guys, and we'll open the floor Question. for questions. Who's, I think we need, <clears throat> Thanks very much. Uh, sorry, Dave, Bar 1661 in Dublin. I might direct this to Tim because you were forthcoming with your numbers before. 
I see a lot of people trying to get into this space and do, could you give any implication of how, how big is the market? You know, I know you said 1.7 billion, but if your pubs were doing 6 million turnover, what are you looking at for the whole pandemic period doing something like this? What we've already achieved or what we think it can do? What we've already achieved or what we think it can do? Yeah, year, yearly, maybe, or something. So, yeah, I think for us, you know, I've, I've worked in this market for 20 years, so that side of the bar is bloody hard work and the margins are really tiny and you've got a lot of competitors set that you're going against. For me, it's totally about gifting and it's looking at how the market and the consumer market has changed. Everybody, you know, people are saying thank you or hello or love you, you know, to all of their friends and family. So for us, uh, we have about an 80% uh, recommendation rate. So this lands in somebody's doorstep. They open it up, they get it, they recommend it to friends. And that's how our entire market has grown. So we're only really scratching the surface of what there is there. This is uh, kind of uh, letterbox point one of what we look like. Uh, in the next week, our full branding rebrand package that I've done will, will come out, which looks much more like the style of the presentation. Uh, not on the high street. We go live with not on the high street in two weeks' time. We've been live with not on the high street for about six months, white labeled with another business. Uh, I've only given them our classic serve. So salted caramel, espresso martini, uh, we did the cabbage cream egg espresso martini with them as a test. Through Not on the High Street, we sold six and a half thousand serves in ten days. So they're bracing me for Christmas. They turn over about 25 million quid in gifting. We've sat with them. Uh, we've kind of worked hand in hand with them all the way through the pandemic. So they're helping us learn the gifting market because pub consumers, no problem. Uh, on trade, no problem. Gifting, whole brand new world for me. Um, you know, and how you respond to people's uh, complaints. You know, we lose some of these boxes with the courier service, especially at the minute, and how quickly we can get a box back out. If we miss somebody's 21st birthday, you know, how long it takes us to get those out. So, yeah, really exciting, huge market. Um, yeah, can't put a number on it. I'll, I'll do some work in a few months' time and <laughs> convince somebody to give me their information for free. But at the minute, um, yeah, it's just an opportunity, massive opportunity. Hi guys, all right. Uh, thanks for coming to talk today. Uh, my name is Paul from MT Food and Drink. Uh, I had a question for both of you guys. Uh, it sounded like you guys uh, grew your companies very quickly. Uh, Sorry, I can't. We, I you, can't. You guys grew your company very quickly from a short space of time, or the, the concept. I was just wondering how you guys manage um, upscaling. Uh, I guess the demand and meeting the demand with free supply. Go first. Or? So, when when the demand kicks off. Yeah, so when you first launched... Yeah, it was a launched. nightmare. Yeah, so it was... Um, so just... just I'll, I'll pick up on... Sorry, I, I don't know. I'll pick up on your question about the market size, for example. So um, before we launched um, the range, there, is, there was a, a competitor, I wouldn't name them, but they're based out in Essex. And they're quite big. And what we heard was they were doing a quarter million pound of sales every week. So that's just for the numbers. So what happens when the lockdown happened? I just went through the roof. So the, the, it was a very challenging time for us when you know Christmas 2020 happened. It was just this. There was nothing else. And uh, you know, two of our bars just became into factories. And at that time, we were not factory producing. Um, so I think the the important thing is that if you're coming from an operator's perspective. There is hardly any planning. Like you, you know, open a shop, and it's probably a week-long planning, and that's about it. But you open a shop, you open a bar, you, know, you close it down, and if you don't have something, you just stop selling it. When it comes to e-commerce, you can't do that, right? It, you, because you've got to buy bottles, and you have to buy caps, and you have to buy boxes, and you have to. So planning is very important. Now, being this domain, this domain being a very new one, and you know, operators like ourselves. With, with hardly any experience in, in selling distance. Um, what we have learned is that we have to plan for the next three to six months. Um, and so, yeah, it was quite challenging. But I think now that we've been through one Christmas, this Christmas looks a little bit different. Uh, we are stocking in advance, I guess. You know, you're doing something similar, right? Uh, yeah, we, we, there are 27 hours in a day, right? So um, we went from um, mucking around with this and literally mucking around with it, um, going to the local post office and sending 10 boxes, 
high-fiving each other on the way out, going, shit, that was great fun, uh, to having a two-and-a-half-hour queue at the local post office that we thought we were helping, pissing everybody off in the village, taking down Croydon sorting office. It was definitely us. It's still not proven, but I'm sure it was us. Um, and literally no courier would touch us. You couldn't get these boxes. Cardboard had run out pretty much in the UK. So if you're a big guy, you could get it. I had to call in some favours from people that I knew just to keep us going. We went through about 20 different variations. At one point, we had a letterbox that was that big uh, because everybody was at home. So it didn't matter, right? We didn't have to put it through the letterbox. Uh, now we've built a purpose-built bar in my pub, which is in Surrey. Uh, I have two full-time employees on, the, on it. Uh, Joe, who's my success manager of the site, and that was his job to run the business, owns 25% of this business. Uh, I gifted it to him uh, when we started. And yeah, he oversees it. I have 56 people that work for me in that, bu in that building. Uh, when we get a big order come in, we just reach out to the team and ask them to step in. Um, I'm determined to keep it handmade. I'm determined to keep it fresh. These were made this morning. Um, it's not that difficult for us to keep it as part of the production and what we're going with. Uh, if I have to move to a warehouse, then great, high five. Uh, but if I can keep it in the bricks and mortar that I pay a bloody fortune for already, then it just costs less, less money on the business rates. Um, and we run a, run a business from that. My background is, is FMCG. I've done this for 10 years. So this for me is, is my, where my domain. So I can step out of pot wash now. Uh, I can drive it forward. Um, we've got the pubs operating at absolute full tilt um, and we've put 40 more people into our business since we reopened back in April so I can concentrate on this, have some fun uh, and that's what it is really, it's all about having a bit of fun. If it works, it works. Uh, if, it, if it all goes down, we've lost nothing. Um, we've gained some experience, we've had a bit of fun, we've learned some new things so that's, that's what we do. Um, hello. Hello. Um, so just a quick question. For example, if I have a bar or a restaurant or I'm hosting a wedding party, could I order your cocktails? And how long would they be until we can get them delivered? Uh, is this something that you know, takes weeks or yeah. days? No. So as I said, like our product is quite different from Tim's product. We are prepared. Uh, we've got you know, these pre-batched already. Um, and pasteurized. So the shelf life on this is 12 months. It's, um, so it works for trade. And if you order a box today, you'll get it tomorrow, uh, guaranteed. So um, for, for, for consumer, this, these retail at around five pounds, six pounds a pop, if you buy in a box. Uh, for trade, we're looking at 250 to 280. Um, so if you buy it for 250, all you have to do is pour it in a glass and it becomes a 10 pound cocktail. I think that's great. So if you are opening a bar or a restaurant uh, where you need cocktails, please get in touch. That answers your question? Yeah. <laughs> any more for any more? No more? I think that's about it. Come on, don't be shy. Okay, Any cool. more questions, guys? Uh, so you've sampled his, you've tasted his. If you want to take one of mine away, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's, it's all yours. And uh, thanks for having us on The Cocktail Lounge. Yeah, thank you.